Tiomke and I am here to uh, start talking about computational storage. Yeah, I'm from a company called NGD Systems located in Southern California. Um, let's start with, uh, with storage, right? So a storage device uh, was uh, designed to do three things. Read, write, and erase. Hard disk drive, SSD, they do th those same functionalities in different speed, different power envelopes, volumetric density, but they can read, write, and erase. Those are the three functions that they are meant to do. A computational storage add, add another function, compute. So the question is why? Why there is a need for compute inside the storage? Uh, when you have a system with 4, 8, 16, 24 SSDs and uh, there's a large data set on that system, then the pain of moving the data for any type of uh, computation is not measured today. Nobody is measuring the data movement in terms of power and time. And when you have computational storage, the ability to run your application or container inside the storage, that's the, the biggest benefit that you get from computational storage, especially if you take advantage of distributed uh, processing uh, when you use a bunch of them. So uh, today's agenda, I'm going to talk about the edge. I'm going to talk about some of the architecture of uh, NGD systems, uh, show you how we, how we do computational storage, how we enable it, uh, go over our a, a seamless uh, programming model, which is a very big uh, uh, piece of our uh, technology. And then talk about some of, uh, some of the use cases around AI, uh, machine learning, and database acceleration. So uh, uh, data. Uh, in almost uh, every uh, presentation today, I heard people talk about uh, how data is going to grow. I was in a Gartner conference uh, uh, back in December where they predict that uh, in five years, 25% of data generated and stored will be at the edge. We call it edge computing, distributed cloud. Uh, so we're all expecting this uh, big data growth at, uh, at the edge, and I have a short uh, video to, uh, to share with you. Cloud computing alone is not going to be adequate anymore to support the emerging Internet of Things. Internet of Things is approaching us faster and faster. Things like your fridge, your dishwasher, uh, your coffee maker will all have their own internet connections and they will be able to gather data. 50 billion network devices. You know, 50 billion devices connecting, driving traffic. It's not the devices so much, it's the amount of data that is just growing exponentially. At a certain point, the pipe cannot support any more data. One of the, the problems that has played cloud applications is the latency required to get data back and forth to the cloud. It just functionally wouldn't work. Uh, there would not be enough bandwidth. The servers themselves would get overloaded. Burdening the network with more and more traffic. You really need to have a device that can process the information that's coming in real time. As these new use cases evolve, the autonomous car, the connected plane, You've got this need for speed and, and latency and locality of compute that's going to drive you to do some of these functions at the edge. When it comes to making important uh, real-time decisions, uh, edge computing significantly reduces the latency. Instead of us adapting to computers and having to learn their language, computers are becoming more and more intelligent in the sense that they adapt to us. It is estimated that 45% of created data will be handled at the edge. That means storage, processing, analytics, and decisioning. And that's going to drive a need for some new capabilities and new technologies. So uh, the edge is coming and lots of data is, is going to be generated at the edge, need to be stored at the edge and processed at the edge because the pipes will not be big enough to move it uh, all the way to the cloud. Uh, and that's a perfect uh, use case for computational storage. Uh, the data being generated, you need to make essence of it, uh, a value, uh, and if you do it at the edge, you need compute power. So if we look at the, at the data scheme made from a high level, you know, there's the cloud, cloud infrastructure, and edge, and they all have very interesting use cases for computational storage. And what NGD Systems offer is offering a platform. So we provide SSDs with compute capabilities, and I'm going to dive into the architecture in a little bit. But what you can do with them, it's really up to you, up to the user. 
The, the rule of thumb is the data has got to be big enough, the data set, in order to make sense, because if you have a very small data set, you can use the local RAM to, uh, to process it. So if the data set is, is big enough and it's an I.O. intensive type of application, that's where computational storage come handy. And a few examples that we have here, a face or a Facebook artificial intelligence similarity search, so image similarity search, running TensorFlow, database such as MongoDB or Hadoop, uh, a container, uh, we have here an open license plate uh, recognition container, and some uh, storage functionality such as compression or encryption, all can be good use cases of uh, uh, computational storage. So let's look at our uh, lineup, uh, what we have. So we have only NVMe SSD, we don't do anything else, and we have several different form factors that today are in mass production. So we'll start with the UDA2, 32 terabytes uh, and 12 watts, M.2 that is shipping today at 8 terabyte and 8.25 watts. And we have coming up uh, the EDSFF, uh, short and long. Uh, and the, the fact that we have the uh, a product at such high capacity and low power is not uh, by chance. That's how we designed our, our solution. So we, uh, uh, from day one when we designed the architecture, we had a few things in mind. High capacity, low power, and QS, low consistent latency. Uh, uh, those were all very important elements in the scheme of computational storage. So, uh, how we uh, design the product? We have our own SOC. It's a 14 nanometer, 16 channels SOC, NVMe. Uh, and the, actually, uh, the SOC is coming in two different packages. I have here the small package, uh, and the big package is just different ball pin out uh, for small or large form factors. Uh, we are NAND agnostic. So our SOC support SLC, MLC, toggle and on-fee mode, uh, all the different, uh, all this actually six NAND vendors that uh, the cheap NAND products today, we support their NAND. We, uh, we have our own LDPC and own firmware, and we actually have our own product layout and design. So everything, everything you see will be fully vertically integrated except making the actual NAND. Uh, and on top of that, we, we added the computational storage part. So uh, you have M.2s, several of them that are connected to a host. And each one of them has compute capability, ARM core, 64-bit quad core, that reside inside the SOC. So that allows us to run an operating system on each SSD. And basically, each SSD is its own microserver. It, so on top of being a block a, a storage device, it is, it is a microserver. Uh, that allows you to run a container, run an application. So let's, uh, let's look at, at how we did the, uh, the SOC. So this is an illustration of our SOC. So on the left-hand side, we have the host with the operating system, application, CPU, GPU. Uh, our NVMe controller looks just like any other NVMe SSD that you can see out there, right? There is a media controller that's, that provide the garbage collection, wear leveling, front-end, back-end, the NAND media, and the DRAM. But on top of that, on top of that uh, uh, plane, we added another plane inside the SOC. And that plane holds our ARM core. Okay, it holds the ARM, ARM core. We have our own operating system and the, the application or container that is running locally in the drive. Now, the orange arc that you see that is connected between the host and our drive, this is a, a TCP IP tunneling that enables the computational storage. So we looked for a, a seamless programming model, non-invasive way to enable computational storage. We didn't want to create a special driver, change to the operating system. So we used existing technologies to enable computational storage uh, and allow us the seamless programming. So if you uh, listen to the uh, Xilinx uh, presentation before, very good overview on computational storage. Uh, but FPGA uh, it is more expensive than an SOC. Usually SOC disadvantages is that you, once you're moving into an SOC solution, you're kind of limiting yourself with the option that you support, but we're able to go around it with our a, a programming model. So let's talk about some use cases. And we start with the edge. So this is a, a, an illustration of the Azure, Microsoft Azure. 
Uh, as you know, Microsoft is promoting Azure Cloud very heavily. Uh, and for the Edge, they, they introduced the Azure Edge OS. Now, Azure Edge OS is actually a container. So we have customers that buy, it, uh, buy our, our M.2s, four or eight of them, put them in an Edge Compute box, and each one of those drive is running its own Azure Edge OS with an application running on the drive. So think of the Edge Compute uh, uh, use case where you have data coming from various sensors to the Edge Compute unit. Each uh, SSD is it, it, like its own node running the Azure Edge OS and running the application locally. The outcome is efficiency. And this is a, the exact uh, purpose of computational storage, to have the whole system perform faster, take less power, and be more cost effective from a TCO uh, uh, option. Uh, another use case. Here we have, uh, we have a camera that have a live stream and it, on the, it, the camera stream goes through the, the CPU, it's a, it's a pass through and on the drive we're actually running TensorFlow and uh, MobileNet v2 to do the image classification. Now, you can run the same TensorFlow and image classification on the host but it will consume much, much bigger power envelope. So this in this illustration, we are very power efficient by doing it on the drive. Now, another advantage of having a video stream coming through the CPU or directly to the, to the drive is not only we can run AI or image classification or image identification, we can now take that stream and run, run it with relation to Elasticsearch or MongoDB, so an existing a database that reside on the storage anyway. And by doing that, we're preventing the data moving back and forth from the storage to the host. Here we have an, a, a use case of an autonomous vehicle. So there's a box sitting in the car, a being a, a acting as the data recorder of that autonomous vehicle. Numerous uh, cameras in autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, all the data is stored, uh, so you need high capacity of storage. Again, we have eight terabytes in M.2, so very efficient in volumetric density with only eight watts. And as the data is being stored, so the GPUs are uh, uh, doing their uh, uh, real-time application as the data stream, uh, is streaming in. Once the data reside on the storage, we do what we call as near real-time. So now we can, we can compare those images to an existing database and make more usage of the data. There are a, two different ways that we see how a computational storage is being implemented. The one is fairly simple. You have one application that you want to uh, run on the storage in parallel. That is the easy case to, to do. So you take, let's, take, let's, let's think of a container type of, uh, of application driver license plate recognition. So you take the container as is from the Docker store and you just dump it inside the storage with as many storage devices that you have and that's it. You have the application now running in parallel on all your storage devices. The more sophisticated uh, way of using computational storage is when you have a large infrastructure of data, big data, and you want to do some types of analytics. Right? So you have 24 drives in a server, 24 U.2s, each one of them is 32 terabyte, and you have a bunch of those ser servers in a rack, and now you want to take advantage of uh, computational storage. You have a bunch of applications, and you need to decide which application you're going to maintain running on the host to do the heavy lifting, and which application will make sense to run on the storage to do the initial screening of the data. Now that is a, it's not a trivial process, but it's, a, it's something that will pay off if you want to increase your efficiency as a system. And in those cases, NGD systems support customers. We usually run a proof of concept, uh, providing them with a system, support, help them to decide how to sort the applications, which application will run uh, locally on the drive, and which application will run uh, at the host level. Uh, Hadoop. So here is a use case of uh, uh, running uh, Hadoop. Uh, and the TCO that is uh, screaming here of how much we save is we, we save from an 18U uh, uh, rack 
into a three-year rack by utilizing the core of each SSD uh, that, that we offer. So uh, not only that we can save on efficiency uh, uh, with performance, on power, but the TCO is a major role in computational storage. Here I have a use case of, a, of a compression, and uh, we heard Xilinx talking about JZIP, we heard IBM earlier this morning talking about JZIP. So uh, uh, enabling that on an SOC solution provides numerous uh, advantages. And what we have here, we have a system based on an Intel CPU and 64 gigabyte, gigabyte of uh, RAM, and we have a benchmark of uh, an NGD drive uh, with a Micron drive and Intel drive. Now, Micron and Intel are, are fabulous NVMe SSDs. They have nothing bad to say about them. They really are fast, promoted, acting like they should. But as you can see, the more drives we add in the system, the performance of the decompression is flat. A and the reason it has nothing to do with the drive because you are limited by the actual host, CPU, and memory. That's what determines your compression or decompression ratio. With NGD systems, which is the green light, you see that the more drives we add, the higher the performance. And it makes sense. Every drive you add, you had four cores that are doing the compression or decompression. So as you add more drive, you increase the, the performance linearly. Now usually when you do that, usually when you increase performance of a system, there's a power penalty. On the lower left side, we can see that not only we're not paying a power penalty, but we are saving power to the system. So how do we do that? It's, we, we don't have any magic tools. It's very simple. When you don't need to move the data back and forth to the host, you're saving energy. And this is one of the misconceptions in the market about the computational storage. Nobody's measuring today data movement from, this, from the storage to the host, because you have no way no other way of doing it un unless you're using computational storage. So you can either put your entire data set of, on memory, it will be super fast, but expensive and volatile, or you can put your data set on storage. If you put your data set, set, uh, set on storage and you don't utilize computational storage, you gotta break down your, your data into smaller sets and move the data back and forth from the host to the storage. When you don't do that, you save power. And that's what we show here in, the, in that example. Uh, in, in MongoDB. So we ran an instance where we took a, 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 an online store and actually ran it locally inside, inside the uh, computational storage. And the advantage is if you, use, if you lose the connectivity of that site, you can still perform a, a, the activity on, Mongo, on MongoDB. Um, you, and I believe we have a white paper about it, so if you're interested, let me know. I'll make sure you get a, you get a copy. Okay, so uh, in, in summary, uh, uh, computational storage, it's a new concept, okay? Uh, we are very active in SNIA. We actually, uh, our VP of Marketing is the uh, co-head uh, co of the uh, computational storage uh, technical working group. Uh, we believe that there are many use cases for computational storage, uh, and in the tweak we define several different uh, solutions to go about it. We believe all of them have very good uh, a, a way of existence. A, the major benefit is the reduction in data movement between the storage and the host. A, and if you're interested in hearing more a, use cases, come uh, talk to me after this uh, presentation. Okay, thank you very much.